So today I'm going to start with some factoring and the factoring skills that you need in grade 11. You just have to know how to do this. You learn it in grade 10. Maybe you didn't learn it well enough. And if you don't know how to do this, this next part of chapter two is going to be impossible because almost every equation is going to require some sort of factoring. So I'm going to go over just the first two basic factoring skills using common factors and factor by grouping, which also uses a common factor, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and then the next lesson I'm going to do trinomials, and then the next lesson I'll do a quick one on difference of squares and perfect square trinomials, so we cover them all. So the first couple of questions here I have for factor common factors, you look at each of the terms that you're factoring here, and you see, is there something that is common to both of them? You first want to look at the numbers. So we have a 3 and a 15. So if I asked you, what can I divide each of these terms by? The same number, right? What can I take out of both of these terms? So you would probably say 3, because you know that 15 is divisible by 3. So don't forget your equal sign. You place 3, and you divide each term by 3. And that's as simple as it is. Right? Just that easy. All you have to do is take out a common factor. In the second question here, we're going to look at the three numbers first. So 12, 8, and 24. Don't worry about the sign. I just want to know the value. What number can I divide each of these terms by? So you might say, well, um, 6 goes into 12 and 24, but it doesn't go into 8. So your greatest common divisor here would be 4. 4 goes into 12, 8, and 24. So I'm going to put a 4 here. And now I'm going to look at the variables. And if you notice, they're all y's. So I could take one y from each of these. Because this one has 1, this one has 2, this one has 3. So they can all donate a y to the gauze here. Okay, so now it's just a simple calculation of dividing 12y by 4y. So 4 goes into 12 three times and a y divided by a y. Let me just write that over here for a second so you'll see maybe a little better. So 4y. So the 4 goes into 12 three times and y goes into y once. So I'm left with just 3. So if you expanded this, that's how you check, right? If you factor, expansion and factoring are opposite procedures. So when I multiply these together, I would get back to the 12y. So minus 8 divided by 4 is minus 2, and y squared divided by y is 1y. So you double check, 4 times minus 2 is minus 8, and a y times a y. Remember, you're multiplying, you add the exponent, so it gives you y squared. And finally, 24 divided by 4 is 6, and y cubed divided by y is y squared. So if you multiplied these out, always double check, positive, 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 that's 24, and a y times a y squared is a y cubed. Okay, so that's common factoring. Now if you take a look at this one, some people have a little bit of trouble with this because there's something in a bracket. But all you need to do is think about this like a block. So this term and this one, they both have an a plus b. So I can factor out an a plus b. And what am I left with? I'm left with 5x plus 3. So I know when you see, see two things here, like this binomial, it, it gets a little more confusing. But if I had said over here, let's, let's try it this way. Maybe it'll make more sense to you. Let's say that y is equal to a plus b. Then that would make this equation 5xy plus 3y, right? And if I asked you, what can I take out of both of these? You'd say y, and what are you left with? 5x plus 3. But I had already let y equal to a plus b. So I plug a plus b back in here like this. And now you'll see that that's the same thing as I had over here. Okay, so that's just proving to you that what I've done here makes sense. Or you could think of this as just like a block, a brick. I took out this brick and I'm left with 5x plus 3. Now that's important for another type of factoring called factoring by grouping. 
So usually you group and then you take out a common factor. Factor by grouping normally has three terms like this, or sorry, four terms. So you want to group it into twos. So when I look at this, the way it's written now, and sometimes, as you'll see soon, you have to rearrange this before you factor it. So you're pulling something out of this, like, if I look at this, right, they both have a W. And if I look at these two, they both have a Z. So that's looking pretty promising. So we'll start by doing that. And of course, you can always go back and change your decision later if it didn't work out. You want to end up with something in the brackets that's the same on both sides of this plus sign here. So if I look at these two terms, I can take out a Z and look what I'm left with, X plus Y. So now that I've made these two things the same, it's simply just like one of these factor, um, common factor questions. So they both have an X plus Y, so I will take that out. And I'm left with X plus Y times W plus Z, and you're done. So this is like W times this gave me that one, Z times this gave me that one, and we can go back and forth ad nauseum. Don't want to do that too many times. Okay, let's take a look at this one here because it's starting to get a little more tricky. So when I look here, I have an M squared, something with an N, another M, and then an MN. So you can either group these two together so that I can pull out an M out of them, or you could have put these two together and take an N out of them. Let's do it the first way. I'm just going to rewrite it. So I want my M's together. So I can, this way, I know this little grouping of two, I can pull an M out of it. The way it is right now, I couldn't take anything out of these little two groups, right? There's nothing common. For this one, I could have taken an M, but that would have left me with nothing here to take out. And I need to take something from both of them. So I've written this with this one. So now I have minus 4N minus MN. And now I'm going to look at each of these little pairs and see if I can take out something that will leave in the brackets something common. So just work with it. You'll see it works out very nicely. So these two, I can take out an M. And what am I left with? M squared divided by M is M, or M times M gives me M squared. And 4M divided by M gives me a 4. So I've got m times m plus 4. Now that means that I want, in this little bracket here, I want this to be m plus 4. And you can see that right now I have two negatives here. So I'm going to take out a negative n. If I take out a negative n here, see so I put a minus and an n. And if I divide this by minus n, I have 4. And then if I divide this by minus n, I get plus m. And you should see that m plus 4 is the same as 4 plus m. Substitute in any value. 2 plus 4 is 6. 4 plus 2 is 6. So these are the same terms. And I can pull it out as an m plus 4. And what am I left with? I'm left with an m minus n. Okay, so that was a little trickier. You had to rearrange first before you could find some common factor. So let's take a look at this one here. And this one again, when you look at it, you have x squared, you have a 6y, you have an x and you have a 3xy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this with um, the x's together. I'm just going to pull this one, put it over here put this one over here. So let's do that first. 2x squared plus 4x plus 6y plus 3xy. Okay, now I look for a common factor. Now sometimes you might get a question where there isn't a common factor. And if there isn't a common factor, then you can't factor it. There is no common factor. And then you would do something else. We'll look at that a little bit later. Okay, so out of these two terms, what's common? Well, I'm hoping you're saying 2 and an x, so I'll pull out 2x. And what am I left with? 2x squared divided by 2x is x, and 4x divided by 2x is plus 
too. So obviously if I want this bracket over here to be an x plus 2, I'm going to have to take out something with y. So the greatest common factor between 6 and 3 is 3. They both divide by 3, right? Both divide by 3. And they both have a y, so I'm going to take out a y. And now I divide each term. So 6y divided by 3y is 2. Hooray, that's what I wanted. And 3xy divided by 3y is going to leave me with an x. And just like in the last question, x plus 2 is the same as 2 plus x. X. So if all the signs are still the same in these brackets, then they're the same thing, right? If I put in a 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5. If I put in 100, 100 plus 2 is 102, and 2 plus 100 is 102, so it's the same thing. I take that out, 2 plus X, and I'm left with 2X plus 3Y. And that, my dears, is factoring by grouping. Usually you see it when you have four terms and that's what you're going to be doing a lot of factoring in your in your uh, chapter two in order to simplify some polynomials so do some practice you can't just learn math by watching me so do the practice comment below and give me a thumbs up if you're learning something